Okay, so hi guys, welcome to my kitchen. This is uh, Kimberly Knox. We're live in the kitchen with KK, and I'm uh, committed to doing my live weekly webinars to talk about a topic of interest and to do a quick live demo. So today we're talking about uh, a very common issue that I have a lot with my clients, and it's why don't I feel well after I eat? The bloating, the gas, the not feeling well, the stomach pains. So we're going to kind of explore that um, three main areas of why it can, why it can occur. And I'm going to do a, a, a yummy demo. It's kind of preparing right now. And you'll see what that is. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed experimenting with making your own lattes. So I'm actually enjoying a golden latte right now. It's one of the easiest ways to get that ginger and turmeric into your body loaded with antioxidants but unless we're getting it into our body it's a little bit difficult so i've been getting really used to making it within five minutes super easy and of course it's sweetened only with buckwheat honey so you're not getting you know the inflammatory effects of too much sugar mm. it is super yummy so uh and the other one i did was a chai so i hope you've tried those i'm going to go ahead and share the screen and Get this started and what i'll do is i'll take breaks uh in between the uh the powerpoint to chat and then we'll end with making something yummy so this is what we're doing when well, you're going to see this now <laughs> um here we go so let me just hide this video panel real quick and do full screen All right, so yeah, so today's topic is three reasons you don't feel well after you eat. There's probably more than three, but we're just looking at three today. So eating is really for fuel and for cellular health. And as I coach people, and even in my Creed program, we stress this. However, I also let people know, especially in day two, when we talk about cravings and breaking cravings that the brain is geared to look to food and drink substances to feel better and often this is totally unrelated to the necessary fuel our body needs or too much fuel or to our cellular health it's counterintuitive so we do have to find ways to feel better without being detrimental to our cellular health and eating healthy can taste delicious. So here's a couple images. And this picture on the right happens to be something you would find at a major, one of the major uh, franchises of fast food, faster food places, Chili's. Now I used to go to Chili's. I, I probably didn't get that. I would probably get the chips and margarita back in the day. But uh, this is what we're dealing with over here. And this is maybe a typical thing that you would get at a, a vegan restaurant, vegetarian, or a, a restaurant that's focusing uh, more on whole food health. So how we eat and what we eat really matters. So that's one of the things that I do focus on. And this could taste good, going down for the first 10 to 15 minutes or 15 minutes or even, but then things might start to not feel so good within an hour or after that. So one of the principles that, that I follow and that I was taught when I was in school by my integrative physicians and lecturers is about, and this is even, even from Hippocrates, eating food, good food, but not too much. And we've, really gotten away from that in this country having the all you can eat the you know the big gorgings and listen it goes down quick and the brain lights up with that initial hit of dopamine that's that good feeling from the sugar and the conversion and then disaster strikes as the body tries to deal with the strain We'll talk about the strain a little bit, but it strains all of a sudden the body's trying to determine, okay, what's in my body? The liver goes to work. Is there things I have to filter out? The pancreas gets involved, says, hey, I mean, it starts shooting out insulin and enzymes, hopefully, 
if it's working well. And you know, the gallbladder's got to get involved because that bile helps with digestion. But what if we're not ready for all that? And what if it's just too much for the body? That's those are the things you're going to start to feel after. And when people fall asleep after they eat within a short period of time, there's several reasons for that. So the organs have to work harder after a huge meal, especially when it's not high quality, lots of sugar. Blood sugar spikes 10 to 15 minutes after the meal, depending on the food you consume. So if you're eating a meal that's got protein and fat, it's gonna be a little bit slower, but don't forget bread converts sugar very quickly. And then if we're eating a dessert, it goes right to the brain. Then within 15 minutes, probably even less, you're going to feel it in your bloodstream. And you might not feel, you might feel achy because this is the inflammation that immediately goes into the body. Insulin, enzymes, stomach acid, that's the hydrochloric acid that is required to help you digest your food. Um, I'm just going to stop for a quick second here. I'm going to show you a few things. So um, digestion is huge. Oh, so many of my clients are, are digestive compromised and we deal with it a lot. Now I was as well. I, I suffered from leaky gut and I most likely it started with a, a dairy, casein protein, a food allergy, but I didn't understand food allergies or how they could happen. This is how uneducated we are really when it comes to food, but how important that is. So uh, I deal with leaky gut a lot with my clients. So having enzymes, extra enzymes in the body to help break down food are so important. I also talk about that during the CREAM program because there's more than just the digestive enzymes. Today, we need more mechanical type of enzymes to help keep the blood clean and many other things. But myself, I actually take more acid. Uh, and acid is really important for helping you break down food, keep your immune system strong by fighting off bacteria that comes in. If you're an O blood type, you're going to have naturally higher acidic levels in your stomach, more effective for breaking down protein. But those digestive enzymes that help you to break down food, two of them start in the mouth. We'll talk about that. So, uh, when I work with a client, we also look at these things and they are necessary. So let's go back to sharing. Yeah, so that doesn't look too good. Although, and they have pizza boxes in their laps, just in case you're looking at that. So people that have uh, certain sensitivities will go. So we're looking at processed foods, high sugar, salt, and chemicals. The body has to process all of that and figure out you know, way, it's got to figure out what to do with everything, how to process everything. In the meantime, we're not feeling so well, especially um, a little bit after when we have that crash because of the blood sugar drops as insulin and cortisol work together to help keep us stable. And once you get that figured out, no longer do you have, you're not hungry as much because your body is nourished and your blood sugar is stable, which is ideal. And uh, all of these bright colors in this refrigerator right here really wreak havoc on the body. So we wonder why we eat food with no energy and then wondering why we constantly feel tired. So we have to make some shifts. So you guys who have been following me know, and people that, uh, that I coach and I've been in my pre-program know about my bioenergetic cooking method that I created. And it's looking at life and vitality. So eating for a lifetime of vitality, bioenergetic. So we're really looking at food and its energy potential. Organic food has higher energetic potential than conventional, clean, whole foods, rather than processed foods that are just filled with things that the body does not know exactly what they are. They filter, they stuff into fat stores. And then also understanding that they're uh, infusing food and cooking with intention and love is an energy itself. Uh, so here we're looking at high vibrating foods and that's where uh, you know all of the recipes that I do really focus on that. And also removing the inflammatory ingredients, especially gluten, corn, dairy, soy, we'll talk about why they are, but it's, 
comes down to the different proteins and, and glyas, uh, the gluten, gluten is a problem because of a protein and milk is a problem because of a protein. And as our guts become more uh, compromised because the leaky gut is just a cell thick that allows particles into the blood that shouldn't be there one of the biggest causes of all the autoimmune type of disorders, and then glyphosate that is sprayed on the crops. These are the compounding effects of why we don't feel good after we eat. But you can have your cake and eat it too. I love this because there I am eating my birthday cake. That's my million dollar chocolate cake. It's literally two of my recipes that will be in uh, my book. And I put them together. It's focusing on high energy fats, high and low, low glycemic, and the chocolate that stimulates that dopamine you're looking for without exciting the insulin and other. And all of these are high energy possibilities. So this is what we're doing in today's live demo. And that'll be to, uh, as we close up the show here. So stay tuned. It's a high energy dairy alternative. We're talking about alternatives to dairy because they do cause so many issues. And sometimes those issues can be three days away because I tried utilizing goat milk, but I did a little too much of it. And I had a sensitivity, which I could feel through my joints, through my feet, in my, in my digestive tract. And you're going to see just how long your digestive tract is. So this is actually a high energy, nostalgic uh, tapioca pudding that is wildly delicious. I've done it at many demos. So one of the problems that that is common today is we're eating too quick. We're stressed and we're on the run. This is a lifestyle. However, it is contributing to the main problem that we have with digestion, eating at the desk while working, shoving it down, no intention involved with the food, uh, choosing foods that are to go, that are quick, that have very limited amount of good nutrients. So stress in the digestive system. So what we have here is this is contributing to it. There's corrective support. So this is the number one of the three simple things we can do. The body goes into flight or fight mode when we are stressed. So think about when you're working, there's so many demands on you, people are yelling, phone calls, and then it's not supportive of optimal digestion. So really, it's, it's even better not to eat when you're super stressed, but we have to find ways around that because you do need some nutrients. Gut inflammation and leaky gut um, can be caused by too much stress as well and all the problems that a uh, compromised immune, I mean, a compromised digestive process is because once it gets to the small intestine, it's not broken down and on and on. So this permeability of the gut lining, that is leaky gut. I learned about this back in 96, 97. It was so foreign to me, but it's common now. People are hearing more about it. But reflex, acid reflex, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, colitis, diverticulosis, they're all the cause. And it starts with how we eat and how we correctively support stress. So one of the things you can do uh, is you can breathe to relax, to be present while you're eating. Now, so you can actually, I'm going to come off screen to do this, but I'll show you a really easy one. Don't multitask when you're eating. You can take 30 minutes. It actually is better if you step away from the desk, maybe go for a quick walk to pick up something and walk back. That is a very brilliant way to allow your digestive system to prepare and for you to relax, get some nature in, get a little bit of exercise. And uh, just know that you deserve that. So let's come off screen for here a little bit. Um, so I, you know, my clients, I talk to them because we're always stressed. But uh, long ago, when I was working as um, an internal auditor in banking, that was when I had my daughter. And I had to express milk during the day because I was breastfeeding. And your milk will not express if you are in flight or fight mode. So I literally had to go into, we had a gym, I had to go into the gym and to one of the uh, changing rooms and I had to, I had to do breathing techniques to wait until my body got into, I engaged my parasympathetic nervous system. It did not take long. And I simply breathe in through my nose, nostril breathing engages your parasympathetic nervous system more quickly, 
breathing through the mouth engages cortisol and like when you're you know running or stressing really hard in a workout so you simply can do a four seven eight breath work it's great you can practice this i love to practice it when i'm in the car because i'm not getting calls answering emails but it's simply breathing in for four through the nose you hold it for seven when you're holding your breath, your body starts to feel relaxed and then you exhale for eight. And then if you do this at least four times in a row, I guarantee you're gonna get that feeling that feels like this. And we need to get used to being able to re-engage our body into out of fight or flight stress mode into more calming. If you really need to get on the floor and do your um, the yoga pose that everyone likes, uh, what the heck is it? The, uh, <laughs> uh, whatever, the, I forgot what it is now, but the, basically you're just laying there like you're dead kind of pose and it's so relaxing. You have to relax before you eat. And uh, I know you know what it is. It's everyone's favorite. So, and now, and I actually got that feeling from having this, thus the antioxidants and the calming nature of this engage in your body. That's important. So let's keep going. And so you really need to be aware of that while you're eating. So, oh, so I'm going to interject here the Creed program. So I have a great reset for after the holidays. And I do it seasonally just so that everyone uh, that has an opportunity, maybe they want to come in once a season or a few times a year, just to re-engage for a few days to, until it becomes natural. January is a definitely a perfect time to re-energize and get an energy reset because we do like to have a few extra things during the holidays. You're gonna gain some healthy tools to help you achieve your health goals and gently detox from the holidays because this is common. And you know what? And if you're watching your sugar and uh, some of the food you're eating, you can enjoy a few of granny's treats or your mom's stuff. Uh, but when you're nourished, you're, you're not going to be craving this because your blood sugar is stable. When your blood sugar is not stable, you want to go right to the sweets for filling up on something for ravenous urges. It's an epic five-day program. You get so much information. Uh, it's really going to help to jumpstart your weight loss goals and deliver you vibrant energy. This was my, my take and entree to help myself. In five days, I felt the difference and it gave me so much confidence and so much reverence for food and just gave me a new vision of myself. It starts on January the 10th and this, uh, it's really just going to help to uh, have a community, a group of people to help you get back into your goals. It's about never giving up because if pounds just keep putting on it's harder to take off five than it is just a couple and uh so it helps to re uh to reunite you with the goals you have the creed stands for something it stands for regaining confidence and compassion for yourself looking at real food looking at real energy cellular energy getting some empowerment and knowing that making changes can be very delicious it's not about deprivation it's about you deciding that you want to self-nourish and taking care of yourself and no diets. It's about just making the change. The early bonus sign up goes in through January the 3rd. So you can um, check out my website. It's in the services page and you can also read more about it. So here's tip number two. Are we inhaling our food or are we che chewing? I even know myself, I get caught up into eating a little too fast. But here's the details. <laughs> Stop photo. I, th this guy is kind of funny. Obviously, no one does this before we eat. But uh, <laughs> the digestive system, it, it's up to 30 feet long. It starts actually in the mouth. Digestion starts in the mind, though. We'll talk about that in a minute. The esophagus down into the stomach, the small intestine, which is the longest part, about 22 feet, guys. That's a long way for your food. Now, the reason it's the longest is because that's where the absorption and the assimilation is supposed to be occurring so that you can absorb the nutrients. But when leaky gut happens or overdose of candida or even SIBO, which is um, the small intestine overgrowth of bacteria, uh, many things can go wrong 
it does not, so absorption gets compromised, we get nutrient compromised, then it goes into large intestine and colon where elimination is supposed to occur. But that is why liver is so entirely um, involved with digestion because of its, uh, it's a point with a gall, our, our gallbladder delivering bile. If you don't have a gallbladder, there's still bile still is necessary for transforming the food from the stomach. The stomach is supposed to be very high acid so that you can break down the food. You're supposed to chew up to 30 some odd times before you swallow. Listen, nobody's going to chew 32 times, but we're going to start to stay with about 20. But the reason is, is because you want to create that saliva. You want to create uh, some of the enzymes in the mouth that are going to help break down the food. This is a process. And in Ayurvedic medicine, it, it's all about honoring the eating process of, of how it comes into your body energetically and how you break it down. So the gallbladder delivers bile. It changes the, the consistency of the food content before it goes into the small intestine. The small intestine should be alkaline to help us absorb food. Now, it doesn't become alkaline when we're overgrowth with candida, bad bacteria. Now you're talking about probiotics. So it's, you see how confusing it is, but I really help my clients through that. So cooking is one of the best things you can do for your health and your budget. And that's because with cooking, you actually are involved in the process that helps the digestive process start. Because in the process of, of actually getting the food, you get excited about what you're going to eat. I know when I talked on stage, everybody's salivary gland, gland started, they started salivating because they were getting ready to eat through the mind. And they were totally excited, but the enzymes in the mouth were coming. And that, and that starts with the amylase that helps you reduce starches and lipase, which helps you reduce fats. The proteins comes later on from the uh, pancreas and other areas of the stomach. So we want to start with at least trying to chew more, be conscious of it. If you can get up to 20 times, but see, that's why smoothies are so genius and it helps you to upload nutrients so quickly because you don't have to do so much chewing. Although while you're making it, you can smell everything so that your body's getting ready to eat. Um, still, because you still need these enzymes, but this is why people need to take digestive enzymes. Um, the gas, the bloating, and the stomach pain, that all comes from, starts from not chewing, eating too fast, and not being ready, meaning the, the enzymes are not there to break it down. So then we go into the next one, which is food sensitivities. So like I said, I didn't understand about sensitivities, and now I know that uh, dairy has never been good for me. My, my grandparents had a dairy farm. I came from Vermont. We were forced to have dairy. But the thing is, is with a calcium, dairy, dairy farmers were supported all over the country. And a small portion of the people don't have allergies, but a lot of people do, including just mucus forming, which is really bad for any of the flu seasons or cold seasons for your lungs. Uh, you need to take a deep dive into this because we've got over 60% of the people that have sensitivities to dairy. It's not just dairy. Now it's gluten. We didn't understand that, but wheat has changed so much. And the sprayed glyphosate on the wheat has caused even more problems. So when these things happen, and these are some of the common uh, inflammatory items that I do not have, do not cook with, show people how easy it is, gluten, dairy, corn, soy even because of the soy crops the food oh going back to the calcium sorry greens might have this the whole long list i just gave it to my client today greens can have a little less calcium but your dark leafy greens are much better bioavailable sources meaning the body understands recognizes and converts that to calcium than dairy without the inflammation so that's genius and now um, I am going to do a thing on sardines coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm going to make a sardine pokey, knocks your socks off. It is so good for, um, for uh, calcium. But so if you're getting a headache, bloating, tired, abdominal pain, you have changes in your bowel movements like diarrhea, constipation. Nobody likes these. These are like all the side effects from, from drugs and um, from pharmaceutical drugs. You got to note it down. 
and you kind of kind of deep dive into and consider that possibly you want to give up one of these things for a week and see how you feel. And that's where I work with clients on that. So what am I making today? Um, I'm going to be making the nostalgic creamy tapioca pudding. I had a, um, a local dietitian call me because she wanted it for her client. So this is so easy, guys. Um, the the small pearl uh, tapioca, tapioca is just cassava root and uh, it is Bob's drug milk. So it does have some uh, carbs in there, but what it doesn't have is tons of sugar and uh, the dairy, which is gonna add the inflammation added on. So what we're gonna get is the medium chain fats, energy fats, we're gonna get some texture that we love a little bit of maple syrup and um, vanilla. So it's very easy. Uh, let me just see, I think we're done here. Yeah, so thank you for tuning part to this. Make sure you check out my website, that's it there. I posted a new video that announces what's going on with the cookbook and some of the other programs. And I'm pretty active on Facebook and Instagram. You can find me at KK Spick Kitchen. So um, I'm just gonna uh, ask, uh, you guys, let me just stop the recording here, pause it. So we're just gonna uh, angle it over here a little bit. I brought out my little um, pad here. Let me just turn um, this up. It's been soaking. So let me show you how this works. It's very simple. You actually get one can. Now, uh, this is the coconut milk that I use. It's native forest. It's unsweetened organic coconut milk. It's a classic. Don't get light or anything else. It's not, you don't need that. You just, this is good energy fat and uh, it's creamy. So if it's in the refrigerator, because I store mine in the refrigerator to make my, my avocado mousse, but I didn't have this. So you can just pour the whole can into a nice deep pan here, saucepan, and then you add a third of a cup, that's it, of the tapioca. And you let it sit. You have to let it sit for like um, 45 minutes to an hour. So this has been sitting for a while. And my spin right here. And it's already kind of thickened up. You want it to absorb stuff. And then we just you adding it. We're going to add it to the heat here. Uh, is this on? Hold on one second. Nope. So I was making my. <laughs> okay. So this is on now. And uh, basically, you're just going to make it on the stove top. It's as easy as pie. And you can get kids involved in something like this because I know when we were kids, we used to enjoy making pudding. But what was it? It was jello pudding. We got it out of a, a box. You poured it into the pan. You either beat it up if you wanted something quick with milk. And you know that what was in there for additives, preservatives, and unhealthy sugars was not good. But did it taste good going down? It did. Did we have leaky gut when we were seven, eight, nine, ten? Probably not. But so leaky gut comes on. But then also, were, were we insulin? Uh, did we have problems with our insulin at that point? Probably not. But as we age, you know, insulin gets less effective in the cells if we've had issues with too much sugar. Everything kind of builds up. So we have to like really take it back a notch. And then, so this is just really amazing. And so you basically just heat it and stir it until it gets nice and thick. And uh, the PowerPoint went so quickly, I forgot to kind of stop it and um, actually turn this on. So the only thing that goes in here once it gets thickened is uh, a little bit of maple syrup. Like I said, a little bit of vanilla. You, you put them in, um, you put the vanilla in as it's finished. And uh, I just top it with some nutmeg. One thing that I like on top of it uh, for a little more texture is you can add uh, some cut up mango. You mm. can top it, top it with a little bit of, of fresh, uh, fresh ground flaxseed. Mm -hmm. So one thing that makes food so enjoyable is always texture. You know, mm. so when you're combining textures, like why do we like things that are smooth? Because our brain kind of equates them to things like ice cream, smooth and creamy, smooth and creamy or crunchy. We're, we're looking for these things. So when we combine different textures like that, 
it creates interest and uh, and fun. And that's kind of what it's also about. So basically, this just gets nice and this doesn't heat up as quickly as my other one. So, um, so let me just pause this for a second. Keep this recording going. So yeah, so we were talking about the book. So as long as I, the cover and we agree on the, um, the title, which, uh, so working out the details of this is, is uh, very interesting. But so this is heating up nice and what you, you want to keep stirring it until it gets thick, but you don't want to over stir it. And you can see it's already steaming. So what you're doing is just uh, cooking it down and making it nice and it's going to be a little bit thin. And then once it's done, it's really good to have this size jar. So this size jar is probably um, all right. So four ounces is a half a cup. I think these are six ounces. And so you just fill it up. And what I do is I actually cut the uh, mango and I put on top and I put the lid back on. And that way I have a fresh little treat in the, in the refrigerator, similar to my chocolate avocado mousse, just makes it fun. And this still tastes really good when it's, um, it tastes good when it's cold even, but obviously tapioca pudding, I think for like true nostalgia, is a little bit thicker. So now it's boiling, which is great. <laughs> so I made this live at uh, a couple events. And so what you can smell, you can smell it because this is part of the cooking that I really love is that you get engaged with the herbs and the, the smells and everything. Your body's getting ready, it's delicious. You're engaged in the whole process. So let me just grab my uh, maple syrup. So uh, I do not heat any of my buckwheat honey. So I don't bake with any buckwheat honey. I, I really just only bake with either a little bit of maple syrup being from Vermont, or a little bit of raw coconut sugar. And you find that once your palate starts to edit, you don't need as much sugar as you think. And yeah, so this is coming to a nice cooking stage here. And basically you're just, you know, you're boiling off, simmering off some of the, the liquid so it starts to get thick. So that process is literally about 10 minutes. And I don't know if we've been doing it 10 minutes now, but it is starting to get thick, which is brilliant. So I'm just gonna show it to you. I mean, so you can see, <laughs> it's just a nice, um, so it's so easy because it's one third of a cup plus one pan. So it's not like you have to measure anything. And then um, I don't even put a full tablespoon of maple syrup in, I literally, Put about that much. So uh, that's less than a tablespoon. Maple syrup is very sweet, but the body recognizes it as a non-refined sugar. So it recognizes the nutrients in it as well. You don't add the vanilla in until the very end. But uh, that's pretty much it. And I love to t I love to put um, a little nutmeg on top. It adds an extra good. So this is just going to continue to get a little bit thicker as we go here. But what I would do is I just put it into the little cups. <laughs> Sorry, I um, actually was getting jumping ahead here. Um, I would add a little bit of vanilla, which I thought I had out. There we go. That's why it's good to have everything organized and front facing so you know where all your stuff is. You don't have to look through your cabinets. And uh, so just like a half a teaspoon of the vanilla. And you've got a tasty treat. And when you put it in the refrigerator, it's gonna get a little thicker, obviously, because this is coconut cream. 
And as it cools, it gets a little thicker as well. But it's it's so it's so yummy to have something creamy and uh, to have that dairy alternative and to know that you're actually getting energy from the coconut cream. And <clears throat> I do put some of the coconut cream sometimes into my smoothies if I want a little extra. So that's it, guys. <laughs> and that's it for today. Just some little things about why we don't feel so good when we eat and what to look for and some really simple things to consider and to do. And then if you are having these problems consistently, reach out to someone like me because that's what we're here for and trained for is to help you to look at alternatives and how you can self-correct before they become bigger problems. So thanks for tuning in everyone. And uh, until next time, we're going to be talking about winter health next week and some of the foods of winter health because we're having the solstice coming up. All right. <laughs>